I thought I was the last, so I'm quite relieved that I'm second last because the last thing you want to be is the person between you and coffee, but apparently I'm between you, or I thought I was, between yourselves and champagne. And that would be a seriously dangerous place to be and you would not want to overrun. Um, SNOP, it's a big topic. Lots of people write books on the, about it. Lots of people put a lot of effort to implement it. And what's curious is, it's a products review. Which products do we want to sell? Are we going to sell? How much of that are we going to sell? Can we supply it? What are the problems? Sort it out, tell senior management. Yeah. That's basically the 60 second training session on SNOP or IBP. But somehow we, make it, we seem to make it so difficult. So I thought I'd talk to you today about some of the learnings we've had and actually how difficult is it? Or on a positive slide, how easy can it be? How easy could we make it? So I'll introduce myself very quickly because you don't want to know about that. A little bit about Dairy Crest because that will actually form the context of why we embraced IBP. Some of the key learnings or pitfalls that we navigated, that we avoided in rolling out IBP. And through that, you get a sense of the key decisions that we took that made it reasonably successful. Yep. Who am I? <laughs> I'll ask my psychiatrist. Uh, three years with Dairy Crest, um, and since November, I've been heading up manufacturing and planning just for the dairies division, um, which is two thirds of our turnover. Prior to that, I was the head of supply and demand planning for Total Dairy Crest, which is quite interesting because we have milk, where we have infantry of less than a day, through to cheese, which will mature in the extreme up to five years. So very different product characteristics. And it was in this role of Director for Demand and Supply Planning, that I was asked to report to the board on what is this thing, SNOP, and what should we do about it. Dairy Crest, currently, just about still, the number one British-owned dairy company, uh, previously part of a government organisation, the Milk Marketing Board. Since we floated, volumes have doubled. We are consistently top in the business and the community awards which we like to plug, we're quite proud of that. Um, but in reality, we are in the process of selling the dairies part of the division, so milk and flavoured milk drinks, uh, to Muller Wiseman. Okay, so that's fairly imminent, I hope. <laughs> Going on a while. Okay. Like, of, like a lot of us, we supply into many different products, but also into many different uh, channels. Major retail, I think Lidl have grown and Audi have grown, so we've put those now in major retail column. Through to the middle ground, coffee shops, schools, government programmes, prisons, to home delivery. So in some respects, we were perhaps the pioneers of ordering online and get your product delivered at home through the Milk and More programme. Um, we still have uh, over a thousand milkmen in operation and we serve half a million residential customers. So we have quite a lot of different channels that we work through. 2013, we were very much two separate businesses. One business that was doing foods, so cheese and clover, Cathedral City and clover being the two biggest brands. And we had the dairies business, milk, cream, bulk, butter. In 2013, DC announced that they were gonna bring those two divisions together, yep, save loads of money, have one CEO, one head of supply chain instead of two heads of supply chain, instead of two finance directors, two heads of marketing, and really leverage the scale and understand how the two parts of the business could work together, if you like the horizontal collaboration that's come up in discussion today, and take cost out. Each division ran its own SNOP process at that time. So I'm not claiming that we've implemented SNOP, but you would not believe they're the same business. Everything about the two divisions was different. So in one side of the business, the whole cycle took 13 days only, the other side, six weeks, okay? All the terminology was different. All the reviews had different names. The language was different. 
The only thing they had in common was a diminishing current financial year horizon. So we were only looking as far out as the end of this current financial year. Okay. In bringing the two businesses together, what happened was the only person doing the same job was the CEO. Okay. The head of finance was newly promoted. The head of marketing, well previously we had two. So now we had one and that individual had to suddenly learn about the whole of the business. The same for supply chain, the same for IT, the same for logistics and manufacturing. Not only the top table, but the same was true for all of their direct reports and most of their direct reports as well. So overnight, we had a situation where nobody knew how to get businesses, how to get business decisions made. Who do you talk to? Mm, don't know. What's my decision right and decision level now? Don't know. Okay. So the first thing I guess that worked for us in implementing IBP um, was it was a compelling business need. There was a real need to do it quickly so that we could reconnect everybody together and get those business decisions being taken again. You know, to get ourselves out of, if it's an aircraft, out of the stall and flying down to crash. This is a quote from our CEO who said, this is the way we are going to run the business. So we really did take this on. Two years on, IBP is now very much the way we do business. Uh, it doesn't require muscling to make it happen. It has evolved over that time, but actually the core design is very similar to what it was uh, when we relaunched IBP uh, a couple of years ago. When we came to have our first dairies team meeting, because when the decision was taken that we will sell the dairies milk business, we formed or reformed the dairies division. And in that meeting, one of the first discussions that came up was, well, now, we're own, now that we are our own division, can we just stop doing IBP? What do you think, Mike? And I said, well, I'll let everybody else talk first and see what they say, because I was, if you like, the owner of the process. <coughs> Every single individual in the room said, why wouldn't we keep doing it? It works. Yep. So I think that's a real endorsement of the success we've had in implementing the IBP process. The fact that everybody just said, why would you stop? It's working for us. Let's keep going. In the last two years, We've delivered service levels consistently above 99.75 in full and greater than 95% on time in full. Again, we have hundreds of SKUs in milk with less than a day's inventory. Okay, so 10,000 delivery points. Although you may think milk is simple, try telling the cows to stop producing milk when demand is a bit, is a bit light. It doesn't quite, doesn't quite work. Excess inventory generation is down by 97%. Manufacturing costs have come down. I think one of the biggest compliments to the process is the way in which our budget, our annual budget setting has changed. This used to be a massive event. Everybody hunker down for a few weeks, a few months, go through several iterations, present it, <coughs> not good enough, here's some more tasking, go away, come back, and eventually you give the answer that they always wanted at the beginning, but by this stage, nobody believes in it and there's no heart in that budget. Okay. When we came to set our budget for this year, it was really a case of, well, throughout our process, what are the metrics that we now manage through our normal business? We don't look at single point numbers anymore. We always look at a trend on a graph. Therefore, the budget is as simple as extrapolate our performance improvement plan and our current demonstrated performance. Build that back up, that's the expected results. Okay. It had plenty of stretch built into it and, and self-challenge, but everybody from the uh, line leader at the production level right up to the head of manufacturing and logistics, they all buy into that budget because it's based on numbers and metrics and charts that they see every single month. 